Well, I'm Christina Becerra. I live in Toronto, Canada. Originally, I'm from the United States, and I moved to Toronto in 2019. And I work at INT, at Modern Mystery School International. And I feel like I won the golden ticket. Yeah. <laughs> so like, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory was this kid. He didn't come from a lot of money, um, didn't seem very educated. And he just had this opportunity for this magical life. And I always felt like having the opportunity to work at uh, INT was that golden ticket in my life. And I didn't always have a clear idea of what I wanted to do, but when I was a really little kid, I just knew that I wanted to help people. And based on my experience, this has been the most impactful way to help people on an international level. And how it came to be was kind of magical. Like I was actually studying as a student. I was uh, taking a, a, a program called uh, Kabbalah. And everything about this mystery school is always about what do you actually do with the knowledge? What do you do with what you're learning and how is it going to impact your life? And so with Kabbalah in particular, you go into it with this idea of this is the tangible, measurable result that I want to get to. And I just wanted to be able to serve on an international level because when I think about world peace, which I know that everyone, when they hear that, they're like, oh, world peace, it's like this, this trite thing that a woman would say on the stage of a beauty pageant, right? Like, what do you want? I want world peace. And, you know, this mission that I'm on is definitely about world peace. And so well, how do you get at that without considering the world on a global level? So I went into that program with this idea that I want to serve internationally. And so it was this seed, it was just this little seed of desire, like I just want to make a difference in the world. And events lined up during the course of those 10 months uh, for an opportunity to move to Canada. Um, and eventually I, I received an invitation to come work um, here at HQ. And I'm, so I'm the newest member, people have been around, they're kind of like the OGs, you know, they've been around and I'm, I'm, uh, I'm newer, a newer force on the team. Um, and I have a unique role because I, I assist, uh, assist uh, Sismas Dave, um, but I also wear multiple hats. So my days are just never like a nine to five kind of day. You know, when we have international programs, um, I'm all hands on deck, so I'm here. Um, I work with Sismas Dave directly. Um, I'm also a guide and a third step ritual master. And so I serve my clients and local community. Um, but I, I don't really have this, um, this life that is cookie cutter. You know, my life is, every day is a different kind of day. And I switch focuses based on whatever's, whatever's present. So, I mean, really, it's kind of a dream for me to have an interesting life. Like, here's, here's how I would call it. I would say, I live, I live a life without Mondays. I live a life without Mondays because I don't, on Sunday night, I don't dread my week. I don't like wake up and it's like, oh, you know, like Garfield's like, oh, I hate Mondays. You know, it's not like that. My life is that, like, also I forget what day of the week it is. So I can't, I can't hate Mondays. What makes my, it's hard to even call it a job, but sure, like what, what makes my role interesting to me is the depth of learning. How I would say it is, it's, it's almost funny to me that I get to get paid <laughs> because usually someone goes to school and they pay to go to school. Like they pay to get, to receive lessons and to receive training. And you know, for me, I have a job where they pay me um, but I really receive, <laughs> I feel like I'm getting a lot of the benefits because I've learned, I've learned how to become the best version of myself. Like I, I'm around incredible people. 
I'm around Obsessimus Dave, I'm around uh, Divina Franca, and I'm around an international Kabbalah instructor. Uh, inter actually, my whole team, they're all international instructors. So, and their, their knowledge and expertise varies so much. So I'm really immersed around the kind of people that I want to be like. And I think why my job is different is because my team is like my family. You know, I love my biological family deeply, deeply. And it's interesting because my, my blood family, my, who I'm actually related to, I've, I've become even closer with them as a result of this path. Um, around all of the spiritual training that I've done, I've become closer with my parents. I've, I love them more. I'm like more grateful for who they are based on my own personal growth. Like I get them on a deeper level. Um, but then there's my team here at HQ and they are like another family and that's how we treat each other. You know, we're like a family. It's hard to have just one favorite thing about a business date. It's definitely his humor <laughs> because I can just laugh with him. Like I can continue and continue laughing with him uh, and he's a really funny guy. And I think there's a magic to sharing joy and sharing laughter. Like there's a, such a ripe ground when someone is um, was is in a state of joy or in a state of laughter. Like you have an ability to receive more. And so the things that I learn with him, I'm always open to receiving because I'm always in a state of joy. Yeah, I get I get asked this question a lot around, you know, what so I have clients that want to go to Healers Academy, right? And so they ask me, like, well, what is it gonna be like when I go to Healers? And I I describe it like this. This world can be a very difficult place to live in. And when you're around people from all over the world and you see that all of those people are committed to being better people and the world to be a better place, there's a renewed sense of hope around what is possible. And you remember that deep down, people are inherently good. They're just good people. And I think sometimes in this world, it can be easy to forget that and like lose sight of it because you see what's on the news or you have people like Vice, right, or Mark Wilding. And it's like, oh my God, are people really that mean and cruel? But they're not. No, there's like, most people are actually like, you know, like 99% of all people are really good people. And there's just a little sliver of people that um, aren't always acting from the goodness. But I think most people are really trying to do good. And when you're at an international program, you see it like 100% full on. And you're like, oh, yeah, people are good. There's hope. We're going to be okay. Well, I can speak from my direct experience. I think, you know, growing up, I was pretty quiet. <laughs> I was a pretty quiet kid. I was probably the quiet one in my family, which people kind of laugh. If you know me, I'm not necessarily quiet around the people that I, that I love, right? I'm, I'm pretty open in myself. Um, but around, for most of my life, I, w I wouldn't describe myself as a very confident per person. And I went through such a transformation on this path that for me, confidence comes from this foundation of empowerment and also capability. You know, I think that when you become more capable in your life, the, it's like an infinity loop. So you become more capable and then you see that there's more possible and it keeps coming. Um, so then you start to feel more capable of fulfilling what is possible. And that infinity loop continues to just grow and expand. And that comes from initiation and empowerment, but there's not really a magic button. So you actually have to work <laughs> and do something with it. How I would describe initiation is there's a, a current or a conduit of energy that is sourced by something we call a lineage. And lineage exists has existed for thousands of years and we're not the only lineage. So like consider martial arts. So when you have a martial arts student and you have a sensei or a sifu, that sensei or sifu would train a martial arts student um, from the knowledge that they received from their teacher. And that teacher 
teaches from their experience and knowledge from their teacher. And it's this unbroken um, connection from teacher to student for thousands of years. So that's really how you know, traditionally uh, spirituality in that context um, was handed down, you know, beyond religion and all of that. And so we're, we're kind of like that. We're kind of like a, like a martial arts lineage, but we're a spiritual lineage. And so because it's been unbroken from teacher to student, you get to kind of plug in to this source or conduit of energy. And that plugging in, it's, so it's kind of like a battery pack where you can get access to power and energy, but what do you do with it? So do you wanna, do you wanna charge a Tesla with it? Do you wanna just put a lamp on? You know, do you, I think of, you know, coming back to possibility and capability, there is so much that is possible, but it's really what you're choosing to do with it. So initiation is increasing your potential for power, and the work is choosing the life that you wanna create. Um, but the beauty of the tools is you get to have an opportunity to have more clarity about, well, what do you want? Like, what's your unique flavor or what's your unique way of painting your life or expressing your life? You know, it's like, it's where magic is where art and science meet because lineage is a way of doing it. That's the science piece. But I think the art is our expression of the science. I was initiated in 2009. Well, I feel so present in my life right now. So I lost 40 pounds. Uh, I can deadlift about 190 pounds, <laughs> which is pretty um, amazing and fun. Um, yeah, I developed a love of weightlifting, which has profoundly impacted my life because I think that there's this, it's interesting around women, this, the conversation around women. Because in my direct experience, men have never limited my capability or expression of being a woman. But I do find that within um, the community of women, uh, not in the school, but just out in the world, like let's say the fitness community, there's so much around um, how we speak to women and their health. So how to get results for a certain way of like looking um, is lots of cardio and eating less. And the idea of weightlifting is going to make you look bulky and look like a man. And without eating a lot of calories um, and taking testosterone, women don't get big from weightlifting. It's just, it's, it's a myth. And that is perpetuated by other men, or excuse me, other women. Like men have never told me that, that if I lift weights that I would get big. And so in my experience, this has been an expression of being a strong woman is saying, I don't need to get on a treadmill. I don't need to like cut all my calories. Like I could actually eat um, until I'm satiated and I could lift weights and I could be um, healthy and strong. And I think that's an important conversation when you think about how do you wanna live an empowered life? How do you wanna live an, a healthy life? And spirituality is one piece, but then you also have to acknowledge the physical and understanding the physical has been one of my fruits of walking a spiritual life is seeing that um, my relationship with will is one of the biggest lessons that I've learned from this path. And it's why I've been very successful with transforming my body is I don't approach my health with, okay, so eat less, do more cardio. It's like, okay, um, you know, based on what I've learned, being strong is important and strength comes from the application of will. And understanding your will means that you don't wait until you feel like it. So I weight lift whether I feel like it or not. And I don't wait to be motivated because of, from the Empower Thyself program, I've started to um, understand more and more about my relationship to feelings and emotions. And having that understanding means that I'm not, 
uh, my ship isn't just on, on the flow of my feelings. My will is the captain of my ship. And so where I want to go is being led by my will. So it's why I can do things that I think uh, an average person doesn't. I would define the will of God as good. And it's why what we do matters so much is understanding what good is and having the will to be in alignment with good. I think that the mystery school brings people hope. Yeah, I think that, you know, for me, I knew that I was here for something more. And I knew that I wanted a life of magic and joy and love. And I just didn't know how. <laughs> I just didn't know how to do it. And, you know, I, I think also I didn't know, I knew I wanted it, but I wasn't sure it's okay to want those things. Like I didn't know if it was okay to want more for my life. And I feel like as a result of studying with the mystery school and not just studying, but teaching, because I think that there's some real magic to getting to share this work. Like I, my life was one way as a student and it definitely transformed, but my life really took off when I became a guide. And when I began to share this, I mean, I loved it so much. It did such good things for my life. So I was like, I want to share this with other people. And what can I do to shape my life in such a way that this is my life, that this is what I do. And it was actually through teaching and sharing all of this that I began to get it in a different way, I would say. You know, it's like, it's like one thing to, to have knowledge, but when you get to share knowledge, it's like sharing light and you begin to light up other people. And there's this infinity loop where the more light you share, the more that you end up getting back. And I find that I just want to keep doing it. <laughs> Service helps me feel connected to the world around me. I think it can be easy to be in this world and feel like you're alone, you know, especially when life is hard and you have things to overcome. But the beauty of overcoming hardship is that when you do it, you're able to guide people and say, hey, it's OK. I've been through that. I, I've gotten to the other side of it. And there's this connection point to just just turning a light on for people and reminding them that they're not alone. You're not alone. It's going to be OK. There's hope. Well, I'm present with this idea around like separation, right? So when you have an experience of depression and anxiety, which I totally have had, in fact, a lot of my life, I was depressed. And I think in that, there's an illusion of being alone. Like what you feel, it's just you and you're on your own. And I find that the truth is, is that most people have experienced some, if you don't get to come onto this planet unscathed, <laughs> like everyone has this something that they have to overcome to just be alive here. And it's easy to get caught up in your thoughts of like, oh, this is, because the truth is, is that it is your ultimately your own experience. And so would someone have had your the exact same life now? But there's ways that we sort of overlap and there's a common ground where, oh, yeah, I've been through something similar. And I think service ends up creating an opportunity where we just pass. Um, we pay it forward. I get so much from this lineage and from the modern mystery school that all I want to do is just pay it forward. There's, I kind of have a funny story. <laughs> so I always loved to write. I've always loved to write. And it was one of those dreams that I had when I was a little kid that I didn't really give myself an opportunity to want. 
you know, speaking of giving yourself permission to desire a life bigger than you are, bigger than you can even imagine. Like, how do you just let yourself want more? Is it okay? Are you worth it? Am I worth it? And, and if you desire, do you just set yourself up for disappointment? And I think that was my biggest fear is like, if I ever wanted, if I let myself want more, would I just set myself up for disappointment? And so I never became a writer. <laughs> and um, it was actually this whole thing with um, everything that happened with Vice and Mark Wilding writing this article. I found it was such an injustice. And what I learned it, through this path is the world is in need of warriors. You're, the world is not going to get better unless you stand up for the world that you want. And I'm an empowered woman. <laughs> so I had to have my voice and say, hey, like that's what's going on is not fair. You know, this, this really special thing brought all these amazing this healing to my life and healing to my family and healing in such a way that I know that it, it's worth it to want a bigger life. It's worth it to want more now. Uh, and so it was, it was kind of a, a blessing in disguise, you know, an opportunity to write. So I actually started a blog in February, March, April. It's funny how time is, but I, basically in 2020, I started a blog and it was my opportunity to write and just share my, my story. You know, it's on christinabacera.org. And I wrote about what this lineage has done for my life. And so in a funny way, like the thing that I always wanted to become when faced with adversity, it was my opportunity to be like, oh, wait, I could totally still be that. It's not too late. And so I did. And I wrote about it. So check it out. <laughs> Yeah, I would I would talk about Davina Franca, you know. Yeah, so Davina Franca is on the Council of Twelve. It consists of twelve women that are incredible examples of holding balanced feminine energy. And I think that the planet is so ready for women to be women. To and that it's not only okay to be women, but also the world needs it. And for the world to shift, women need to come back into their power and remember the essence of being a woman. You know, from my experience, I didn't, growing up, I didn't feel like it was okay to be a woman. I didn't perceive it as something that was strong. I felt like whatever strength in me was more my masculine side. And it actually took studying with the Modern Mystery School to realize that there was a strength in being a woman. And when I look at Davina Franca, I'm like, oh, she's a baddie. <laughs> she's, she's an amazing, incredible woman. And she teaches me things all the time. I always feel like she has my back. And I think that's also the essence of being a woman is that you're part of a sisterhood. And being part of a sisterhood means that you bring each other up. You hold out a hand and you help and you collaborate and you're unified. And she's always reached out a hand to me, you know, and also she's an alchemist. <laughs> so, you know, she, she's, um, she has a handing down to teach alchemy, which is a process of transformation. And being around her is like being in an, al an alchemical process because I could be having a bad day and she just has this way of like saying something or telling a funny story or a joke or playing a song. And then on the end of this, whatever time I spent with her, I just am in a heightened state of vibration. So she's just not an alchemist in a lab. She's an alchemist in life and being around her, she brings everyone up. The Council of Twelve holds this the feminine energy of our lineage and they are actually um, like representatives of the archetype of being empowered women and so you know if you if you want to be successful at anything in your life it's important to have a hero it's important to have a hero and there are women that are actual he heroes that are out there 
working to create a better world. And the Council of Twelve holds like a blueprint of feminine energy for people to have a guiding light, have a North Star. I don't think that this quality is exclusively for women, but I do think that we can do it a little differently. And I think it's caring. I think feminine energy is this um, open receptivity to care about people. And I think where women sometimes forget about this is that it's also for yourself. I think that caring about yourself and how you treat yourself, how you talk about yourself, how you think about yourself, like your perception of yourself is important to have a foundation of caring. Because if you care about yourself, your actions will be in alignment with that care. Like you'll hold yourself to a higher state or a higher regard. And I think as women, it's very easier. It comes more naturally for us to care about other people. Like, well, like, oh, you know, I want to take care of my family. I want to take care of my partner. And I think to care about yourself sometimes comes last. And one of the things that I've learned from Davina Franca has been that you, you have to have a, a foundation in caring about yourself in order to care about other people. I think the biggest injustice to the Vice article is that it's anti-woman. And it's anti-woman with the mask of feminine, being a feminist, you know. Because what it says is that women, the, particularly the women of this mystery school and in this lineage, don't have discernment and wisdom and clarity to be able to make good choices in their lives, that they're ultimately victims. And I think that's the, the challenge with n Vice and also articles similar to this where they attack men without any evidence, with just pointing fingers. And I think that to when we actually say women are victims, it's not about women's empowerment at all. And I think my heart really goes out to the people that are curious about changing their lives using these tools. And if an article like that were to ever make them question moving forward, I feel bad. It's like, oh, one of the things I feel passionate about is that people know that there's a, another side to things, that there's always another side. And also, it's an interesting concept that there's an article out there saying that these amazing men are bullies when the nature of that article is like <laughs> they were they were bullying us they ultimately were bullying the modern mystery school some of the best people i know are in this mystery school and i love them and it, when something like this happens it's it happens to you too it's not like it only happens to um, those those people over there like our actions ultimately have an impact much bigger than we understand. And I think actually that's the thing about being a woman is that most women don't understand their power. They don't understand actually how powerful they are. And so when you make accusations like this to tear people down, who is actually impacted? Like their families, um, students, you know, people that actually make their livelihood off of this work too. It's like doesn't just impact, you know, people that um, they point fingers at, like there's a bigger impact on this. And I think that there's some real consequences to false allegations, because what happens when there are real victims of a cult or there are real victims of abuse? And when, you know, it's like the little boy that cried wolf, if people keep crying wolf, like what happens to people that really um, have something to cry about. <laughs> like it's not, it's just not fair. Yeah. If I could say anything, 
about my experience with the Modern Mystery School, it would be that it just helped me be more in myself than I knew was possible. And I always wanted to live the life that I'm living right now. And it's kind of hard to imagine that it keeps getting better, but it does. And I'd love other people to know that, that their lives could be better than they even imagined. And no one does it for you, but it can be easier. And you're not alone. If you want, if you want some support, uh, I've, I've been it. I've gone through it. I've done it. And I think if you're seeking, there's something worth checking out here.